Welcome to uh, another in my series of uh, a series on uh, independent bookstores of San Diego. Uh, today, uh, I'm talking with uh, Craig Maxwell of uh, Maxwell's House of Books it's at 8285 La Mesa Boulevard in La Mesa, California, uh, which he runs with his cat, Rorschach, who I think we may just have heard in the background there. Uh, and my employer, to be exact. Okay, well, the uh, um, uh, some kind of uh, working relationship, yeah, and the cats do not generally uh, uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, the, um, the website is maxwellshouseofbooks.com. There's also a Facebook page, but it's got too many numbers for me to say, but I'll have, I'll have this stuff in the description. So hi, Craig. Um, Hello. And uh, we start by telling uh, telling us a bit about uh, about your bookstore. Well, uh, my bookstore is the fulfillment of a long-standing dream of owning my own uh, used bookstore. Uh, we've been in business close to twenty years now, and uh, prior to that, I had I had worked for some time at Adams Avenue used bookstore and uh, uh, the fulfillment of a long-standing dream. I'd, I'd always wanted to have a bookstore. Am I coming through okay? Yes, you are now. Okay. All right. We're going to turn it up just a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I had worked in the used business before owning my own shop. Uh, uh, we've been here now about 20 years. I, prior to this, I worked at Adams Avenue Bookstore. And uh, my grandfather owned a big bookstore downtown, Warmbrock's Bookhouse. Uh, he started that store in the 30s. And uh, so I'd like to think that bookselling runs in the, in the blood. Uh, so what kind, of, um, what kind of books do you carry? So I'm a general bookstore. Uh, we have everything from uh, scholarly and academic uh, topics to uh, just general reading. We have a lot of mysteries and science fiction uh, paperbacks too, but our specialty is in uh, in in academic and scholarly hardcover titles, uh, university presses. Uh, we have a lot of philosophy, fair amount of science, literary criticism, um, a lot of poetry, history, world history, American history, constitutional theory and law, uh, etc. So that that's our specialty. So is it? Um... Is it all used or used and new or, or what? Um... The only, it, it's all used really. The only new books we have in the store are uh, to fulfill requests for very popular titles from say students like 1984 or Brave New World. Uh, we never seem to have enough of those on hand. And so we order a stock of those uh, new from Ingram periodically just to have them on hand. Uh, what's it like, um, you know, uh, you know, for a, uh, a few, few years ago, everyone was, was panicking about the, the death of the independent bookstore. The more recently there's been sort of more optimism that maybe, uh, they're coming back. Oh. The, the, the pandemic has, has probably, uh, uh, how, yeah. to, how, how has that uh, gone uh, for you? Both, both the, yeah, just talk to somebody. the plague of Amazon and the plague of, well, Okay. Well, Amazon has been the real the real blight on the secondhand bookstore industry. Uh, I was in the business before uh, the advent of e-sales, and so I remember what it was like to own a store or work for a store uh, that had a regular clientele coming into the shop, 
uh, and buying books and looking for their favorite titles and calling the store constantly to see if we had the kinds of books they were looking for on hand. And we would draw, of course, uh, a lot of locals uh, into the shop, um, and but people from abroad too, uh, people from Los Angeles, other parts of California, and even, even other parts of the country would come and visit your shop to see if they could find the book they were looking for. Now, of course, most of that is gone. Uh, and that was all due to Amazon. Amazon killed the used book business. But in addition to that burden, uh, the, the latest pandemic, of course, has, has put a strain on the walk-in uh, book selling industry. We're still able to sell quite a few books online. And the irony in all this may be that uh, uh, people's reluctance to go outside and buy uh, might mean that they're sitting in front of their computers and ordering more things. We've noticed uh, no real decline in online sales, but the walk-in business has been slow. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you given any particular strategy for trying to deal with the, you know, with the Amazon threat? I know that uh, some people I've talked to have, uh, have talked about trying to provide some kind of services that a local used bookstore can provide that Amazon can't so easily. Um, have you got anything uh, along those lines? You know, I'm a real Luddite. And so I, I, I wouldn't know how to approach that. Well, for example, they that... have um, uh, some of them have had uh, like um, uh, have hosted uh, author talks in their uh, yeah. the bookstores and or or reading groups or or things like that. I've read about some of those th those ventures and they sound like good ideas to me. Uh, I have not participated in many of them. Uh, uh, we do have very occasional readings in the store. Um, and uh, uh, we have made contacts with regular buyers abroad uh, who have been good enough to give us their email addresses. And so we're able to call them and, and tell them about uh, uh, the arrivals of, of uh, new inventory that might interest them. But I haven't been especially innovative in that area. Um, you know, I, I hate to admit this. Okay, uh, then we'll leave them here. But we, we have... Cash? We've been yeah. selling on Amazon of necessity, and as much as I resent what they've done to the business, uh, using them has been um, essential. We, we try to emphasize sales on smaller sites like uh, Biblio and ABE Books a little bit more, and that's probably where we sell more of our better books. But I would say, again, regretfully, somewhat guiltily, uh, the bulk of our material goes out the the, yeah. the mail in um, uh, you know or the through Amazon. Where yeah, well, I've, I've sold some things on Amazon okay. too, although Amazon's getting sort of less and less friendly to independent sellers on Amazon in various ways as well. Oh, yes, no doubt. Uh, they, they are about as impersonal a, a, a Leviathan as, as they could be, you know, and uh, they're very hard to deal with. Um, well, that's, that's one advantage that um, you know that uh, indie bookstores have over Amazon is that um, you know if you've got a problem with Amazon, trying to contact someone and get some kind of coherent resolution of it is you know is a bureaucratic nightmare. It's uh, virtually impossible. Whereas you you know if there's something with a oh, with a okay. with the, you know, you know, if whereas you know if I order a book from you and you accidentally send me the wrong book, you know I can get it fixed pretty quickly. Uh, you know I was I was able to. You know, get a hold of you pretty quickly. Whereas getting a hold of you know, whoever the the equivalent would be at Amazon or someone who could fix the problem would be a. a the there are cases where I've ordered something from uh, I can't remember if it was Amazon or Barnes and Noble, but they kept sending me the wrong thing and they kept sending it back and they kept sending me the wrong thing again. Just something that's unlikely yeah. with a, an indie bookstore where <laughs> some there's some conscious human who who uh, has some understanding of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It, dealing with them, whether you're dealing with them as a buyer or a seller, can can be an experience ranging anywhere from disappointment uh, to to inadvertent comedy. You know, it, it's it's almost impossible to find anyone to talk to, um, and it it kind of reminds me of the the uh, 
uh, some of the scenes in the Mel Brooks movie, Silent Movie, uh, with the Engulf and Devour Corporation. You know, that's, that's my nickname for Amazon. You know, it's, it's this, this gigantic impersonal behemoth, you know, that we that won't talk to us as sellers. And, you know, from the stories I've heard from buyers is every bit as bad. Yeah, no, I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've ordered a lot of things from Amazon, uh, but, uh, you know, where I live, there aren't a lot of, you know, there's not much in the way of independent bookstores where I live. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, well, I guess I can order online for independent bookstores. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. Well, of course, that, you know, uh, Amazon tends to, you know, to have a good, you know, better price point for, um, for ordering. At least you've got the Amazon Prime, which I, I confess I do. Um, but, uh, you know, if I lived where there were more independent bookstores, I, I would like to think that I would, uh, I would patronize them more because, uh, you know, I like living in a place where they're, where they have them. And, yeah. uh, and so it's, a it's a, it's a perfectly self-interested thing to, uh, uh, you yeah, know, to shop there and try to keep them, uh, going. Yeah. And I don't doubt you'd be one of those people. And there are some others like you still. Uh, the people that I remember back in the day when I worked at Adams Avenue Bookstore who would come into the shop once or twice a week, not for anything in particular, but just to browse. Uh, that was a regular part of the book business. They were names you knew and they were people who uh, over time became friends. Uh, that has mostly disappeared, but there are still a few. Uh, and I, I get some of the old timers in the shop who will come in and just wander through the stacks and pick up small armloads of books that they never intended uh, on encountering or, or buying, but they just come in to browse. And that's, I think, as you were saying earlier, one of those experiences that's possible in a physical store that uh, is not physical, certainly not possible on Amazon, and not even possible uh, in you know the countless uh, in-home, in-garage stores that people are running now as strictly online businesses. Uh, you can't see their stuff. They're not set up for, uh, for shoppers and browsers. And to me, that's, that's the user. Yeah, and with you know, with Amazon, you know, sometimes you can look inside the book uh, online. Although sometimes they'll show you a different, uh, different edition from the one that you actually want, are interested in, and so you think, well, I don't know whether you know this one looks like that one. And sometimes you click on it, and they actually get you the wrong book because, um, yeah, you know, because yeah, and and even there, you know, I mean, number of, of of files that they have to somehow coordinate. So, uh, and there's no human involved in doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they're humans yeah. in the process, I guess. But right, and you know, although uh, you know, we all grew up hearing the the, the phrase "you can't judge a book by its cover." Uh, although that may be strictly speaking true, you can kind of it, a, a cover can arouse your interest. Just the physicality of a book can pique your interest. You know, a, an interesting old binding. Or, or some interesting cover art on, on a more recent book that has a dust jacket, things like that can make you think, hmm, I wonder what this is. And, and you wind up picking up three or four books like that and walking out with them. Well, <clears throat> you know, as a used bookseller, uh, as someone with a physical store, uh, that really warms my heart. I love to see people do that. And to me, that is the book business, not all this online selling that we do as a matter of necessity. Um, you know, e even making you know, deals with the devil uh, like Amazon in order to survive. I, I sure as hell wish I, I could tell them to go to hell, but, um, but I can't, <laughs> you know, they've, they've set the terms of, of the survival of the modern bookseller. And really, I know very few very few who have been able to wean themselves away from, from Amazon. Uh, people like Larry McMurtry, who have made a fortune writing, uh, or, or other people, there's one here in town uh, I know who runs a bookstore almost as a hobby. They have other means of income, and so they don't depend on Am Amazon, and, and they don't use them. Uh, some of them don't sell online at all. But again, that that's... Uh, that's something I can't indulge. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, of course, on Amazon, sometimes on the older book, they just don't have any cover image at all. They'll just have sort of a a blank rectangle. Um, yeah. Or, or even worse, they give you what they call a stock image, uh, which is a generic picture of a book that may not be the book you're expecting. And a lot of people who order books are wanting to buy the book that, uh, that they bought originally years ago. And you wind up with disappointed customers if they don't think that they've you know, gotten, gotten the exact book, even if it's down to the correct pagination <laughs> or the correct illustrator for the book. And sometimes I want to know whether, you know, there'll be some reprint of some old book, and I want to know whether this, this reprint, you know, has copies of the original pages or whether it's been scanned uh, with new text. And if you can't open it, sometimes the description will tell you, but often it won't. And exactly. And some of the, you know, and some of those, um, those scan jobs are very sloppy. And, you know, some, yes. just scan, you know, some, there's some places just sort of churns these things out. So they scan them, but then no one really looks at it after it's been scanned. And sometimes you get, uh, gibberish or sometimes you get uh, I remember one book that had a whole bunch of endnote uh, numbers but they left out the actual endnotes uh, uh. <laughs> um, I, remember, I remember getting one book where I don't know what happened but just all the pages were just scrambled it was just total chaos and oh my a, gosh ahead of time um, because they, you know there are these you know there are these places they're sort of the you know, they're the the book printer is equivalent of Amazon, only worse, I think. Uh, and they just they just churn out these reprints, and often they'll slap a copyright on them, even if they're, you know, from the 18th century or something. They'll just oh yes, they'll just yes. do it, and then uh, you know, aggressively copyright troll anyone who wants to, who wants to sell a you know, a more authentic version of it. So, you know, there there, there are sharks in these waters. Oh yes, even even. Even book selling waters, publishing waters, you'd expect the, the breed to be entirely benign. <laughs> they're not. Uh, they're businessmen. And uh, Jeff Bezos proved that above all. You know, uh, it's for some people, it's all about making money. Yeah. Whereas, um, you know, I mean, you know, I'm all for making money, but, you know, um, uh, you know there's something about, you know, you know, just the the physical books. A lot of people have predicted the physical books are going to go away, and they're just going to have the electronic books. But I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I mean, it'll have you know, it'll happen with some people. We'll be happy to go with the, you know, with the Kindle or whatever. But for me, at least, there's no substitute for having the, the physical book. I mean, having an electronic version can be useful too. Doing um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to have both because if you're, uh, if you're, you know. If you're searching for a particular word or phrase, it can might be better to have the electronic version. Okay. It's just remembering, you know, what the page looked like that you're looking for. Then it's actually easier to find things something in the physical book. Right. Um, I was asked a number of years ago, fairly regularly, whether I thought uh, eBooks would replace uh, physical books, and you know, and I I have never doubted the physical book would survive but i've never been more confident of that than i am now uh and uh <clears throat> i would say my my confidence has been bol bolstered most of all by young readers because you know uh, old farts like me you know are still relatively enthralled with digital technology to the extent that we're interested in it uh it's something new to us we remember a world that didn't have it uh and, and so, you know, I think when I hear people my age, and I'm nearly 60, talking about, uh, you know, the conveniences or, or the ease of downloading books, uh, I have to kind of laugh because uh, to kids, this is nothing. Uh, they can do this in their sleep. And <clears throat> the way kids respond to physical books in the store now uh, is, is a response that I used to see years ago uh, from older buyers, they're entranced by physical books, by the beauty, um, by the fact that they actually own something that no one can ever take, a, take back. And you know, that's, that's downloading a book is really leasing a title. Uh, you never really own anything, but they like the idea of having a physical object that has an appearance, an aesthetic 
and they're they're crazy about books some of them and that really bolsters my confidence for the future and it's not going to suddenly vanish because uh you know because the um you know the publishing company suddenly decides to change the the rights on it so we just you know pages will go blank yeah uh which can happen with you know with amazon and places like that oddly i find that some of my students are not that expert with online stuff they're not oh uh, they're not familiar okay. with a lot of things I'm familiar with. They often they don't know about Google Books, for example. Okay. Um, which surprised me. Um, uh, and they don't know about the Internet Archive, archive.org. Um, and so, you know, when the website, website dies, they have no idea what to do next. Um, you know, so you know, I don't know whether that's something specific about my students or not, but they, you know, not all of them are, and some of them, of course, are very tech savvy, but. Uh, not all of them are. Uh, of course, one thing that, uh, you know, they're all becoming pretty good at, at Zoom because uh, since we've had to teach a lot of courses uh, online, um, you know, we're doing it all through Zoom. And so they're getting, uh, yes. they're getting used to that. Um, so uh, we're, in good shape. we're probably <laughs> back in person in the fall, I reckon, given that the, the, yeah, the, the smells. vaccine seems to be rolling out. Uh, I got my first shot. Okay. Uh, last you week. Need a ah, Second dose so in a month. <gasps> yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure some of their uh, talent, you know, has been honed by this latest pan, okay. by the necessities of the pandemic and, you know, s schooling at home. Um, but uh, thanks, Frank. But some of them are uh, are awfully good. Uh, in my experience, limited experience, there's virtually no problem I've ever had that I haven't been able to solve by turning to someone, you know, uh, 30 years, 40 years my junior and saying, help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, so some of them are they'll just walk me right through it, you know. And really it, experts and, uh, like, yes, but, but even, they uh, do, uh, do like web design and uh, on the side as a right. business. Yes. Um, but but the, um, the the miracle of digital technology is is worn off on them, and I I think most of them are are more interested in physical books. I don't I don't have any doubt at all that the physical book will survive indefinitely. I don't think there will be any shortage of interest in books uh, going into the future. I sometimes worry more generally about lack of readers. Um, it, it does seem to me that uh, a significant significant number of people are being wooed away from from physical books and and the discipline it is sort of a discipline of reading by using their thumbs and texting people and you know watching videos online and youtube etc cetera, etc cetera. um that that is an issue but um but but i know i know enough young readers to be hopeful yeah. Um, yeah. And I, uh, I don't think that the uh, physical book is going to, is going to go away either. And of course, the experience of going into an actual bookstore, especially a used bookstore, because used bookstores often have sort of more unpredictable content. Of course, a new, a really good new bookstore will too, but a lot of new bookstores are just all going to have the same stuff. They're going to have like the latest bestsellers and so on. Um, whereas a used bookstore is going to have, um, you know, unpredictable things. And, you know, you're wandering down the aisles and you'll see something that you might not have, um, you might not have known to search for on Amazon. Uh, you know, I mean, Amazon's algorithm is, is pretty good at suggesting, you know, things that might complement your address. Usually, although sometimes it, it goes nuts. But, you know, it's, you know, it's not really going to know what kind of is going to catch your eye. And I've discovered so many things just wandering around in in used bookstores and just question yes. the whole environment of it i remember one time um uh when i was visiting uh, chicago with my girlfriend at the time and uh she said do you need to go to a bookstore like, <laughs> just, like <laughs> go to the bathroom um not that she wasn't a bookstore type too but she was not you know quite as manic as i was uh <laughs> yeah yeah uh I think I think you've touched on something there. You know, I have uh, a number of subjects in the store uh, that rarely sell, uh, 
and yet I, I think that in order to be a real bookstore, I need to have them. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I, I beef up on literary criticism, uh, on drama, um, on, on any number of subjects that, uh, you know, are, are not exactly flying out the front door and that we only get requests for occasionally. And that when we do sell, mostly sell online to scholars in in London or Berlin or in China uh, or Russia uh, but I feel like damn it this is a subject that to be a real bookstore I have to have <laughs> and I'm not going to get rid of it to make more space for paperback mysteries even though I'd make a lot more money off of them uh, so there are holdouts like us and and you know I'm I'm as committed to uh, perpetuating the, the legitimate used bookstore experience as I am selling books. <laughs> yeah, on, on a related note, this is about libraries rather than bookstores. Well, when I was in grad school, there was some uh, trustee of the university who went into the library and started making a fuss saying, well, look, there are a lot of these books that haven't been checked out in you know 20 years. We should get rid of any book that hasn't been checked out in the last 20 years. Um, thankfully, you know, saner heads prevailed. Um, but you know, instead of asking, you know, how many, how often has this book been checked out in the last twenty years? Uh, what he should have asked himself was, was uh, you know, how often, um, how often does a book that hasn't been checked out in the last twenty years get checked out? And that would be a much higher uh, number. Mm -hmm. And of course, also people don't check out everything they read. They might, uh, you know, they might read it in the library or look up some particular thing in the library. Sure. So, that, so okay. the idea the idea that someone like that should be a trustee of a of university is, uh, you know, was depressing. Don't know what's it, it is, it's <laughs> disheartening to say the least. <laughs> so much of you know, so um, what I did, I know, what I've done in, in, you know, in university libraries has been looking at stuff that nobody had checked out for for 20 years or longer uh because i had some you know weird arcane interest in something and uh if they just you know reduce it to like whatever everyone was doing it would drastically reduce the value of about 20 even yeah yeah I, I i am more pleased to have customers come in the store and go to those sections that rarely sell uh and, and, and buy, you know, find the things that they're looking for, or find things that they didn't expect and, and be excited about what they found, then I am selling a box load of more popular stuff. I, I think this is wonderful. You know, here's that one guy, that one gal who's, who's you know, been hoping to find a store like mine that has say a big literary criticism section and they'll, they'll buy a fair amount of it. Uh, well, that pleases me because I, I think that's something I need to have. You know, the only shake, the only drama we ever sell is is Shakespeare for students. But I have a full, a full theater section, of course, uh, and um, you know, I, I wouldn't consider not having it. Uh, and when that occasional uh, drama aficionado gets comes in the shop and finds what they're after, may, it makes me happy. That's why we're here. A little bit depressing that the only you know drama that students are being assigned to Shakespeare. Not everything against Shakespeare, but you know, not that I not that I love uh, Shakespeare less, but you know, there's a lot of other drama um, sure. as well that you know, were I teaching drama, I would I would want to assign uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, you know, right now, although you know, I, although I teach philosophy, right now I'm teaching a Nietzsche and modern literature course. I'm going to teach not only philosophy but also mm -hmm. literature, and that's sort of I don't get to do that course very often, so that's sort of a, a delight to me. Wonderful. Yeah, we have a big philosophy section in the store, and you know, uh, we have the mainstays. You know, the kinds of philosophers like Descartes and Hume and Kierkegaard and Nietzsche who are assigned, but we have a lot of other thinkers too, obscure continental uh, uh, thinkers, obscure uh, analytic uh, thinkers uh, in obscure, even more obscure texts that, uh, you know, one in a million uh, would be interested in, but we have them. 
and and they're on the shelf for that one again that one devotee you know who's who's looking for the kind of stuff we carry so and you know it's difficult to keep the section stocked especially with used material because you know it's hard to find good collections of philosophy uh, but uh, but when I do it, it just pleases me greatly because I, I have made an, a point of carrying uh, more philosophy than the average used bookstore. Well, again, another question I'm teaching right now is early modern philosophy and while we're doing a lot of the standards, you know, Descartes and Locke and so mm -hmm. forth. I'm also, uh, as I always do, my, my, my reading lists are nightmares for my students. <laughs> very lots of reading uh but i'm also you know giving them uh you know much more obscure things like um this uh uh this piece on on free will by arthur collins that no one ever reads um but a lot of these guys were responding to each other uh and if you you know if you're only you're only hitting part of the conversation if you're just reading only the big names and not little bits of the other people right conversation with them uh so, you know so i stick in a lot of these uh you know these more obscure thinkers you know not always at the same length as the longer ones although sometimes right sometimes the obscure thinkers they think are like really worth paying attention to i stick them in um but uh you know um because you know because it's uh you know because it's the um uh you know 17th and 18th century uh, it's pretty easy to find online copyright free versions at least of this text that are in english um uh, that uh, you know, that kind of sign. So I haven't I haven't assigned the physical copies because a lot of them are just some of these things are just out of print. Um, like the Collins book, I think is out of print. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, um, I think so, so he's he's taking Locke's theory of free will and then he's doing something with it that Locke probably would not have liked. <laughs> but he's uh, but it's it shows how how mm -hmm. these people are picking up on some idea and then developing and so forth. And so there's a you know mm -hmm. I want to get the feeling that there's a whole conversation. It wasn't just that there were, there were these Titans marching across the landscape. Um uh and uh you know but all these people were responding to each other and and uh, part of an intellectual community. Certainly well let's see um don't know that I have any other questions. Do you have any other final comments or? Uh, uh, only uh, a, th a thank you to you uh, for your interest in the business and uh, uh, and for your willingness to to do the interview. And you know, I, I hope you have uh, some luck and gain some exposure with it. Um, uh, as, again, sometimes this is a hard business to be in, but it's it's uh, it's never not gratifying uh it's, 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 I, I look forward to every day here and uh i love what we do and and um you know it wouldn't um wouldn't amount to much in in the grand scheme of of business goings on in the united states anymore the used book business doesn't count for much in the eyes of most people but i'm it's, it's heartening to see someone like yourself take an interest in it and i i really thank you i mean one reason i got uh, started doing this is you know, being a displaced San Diego, and I, you know, enjoy, uh, you know, sometimes uh, for nostalgia reasons, looking at uh, travel videos about San Diego, but they never see anything about bookstores. They talk about beaches and yeah. parks and restaurants and shopping malls and things. And, you know, a lot yeah. of it's fine, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of people don't really realize that the San Diego area really has much of a bookstore scene. They, they tend to think of it as being sort of an anti-intellectual beach oriented uh, place. And so I wanted to, uh you know i wanted to uh do the series and also find out a bit more myself about what some of the uh, yeah the bookstores are and since i you know since i can't visit personally both because of the pandemic and because i'm a thousand miles away um uh you know the uh you know advantage of zoom is i can uh do this and um you know hopefully sometime when i get uh you know get back to the area i can actually visit some of these places in person uh, Terrific. Well, you know, yeah, well, I, I'd, I'd love to meet you and chat a little bit more in person. Uh, I, I think you're right about people's impression of San Diego as being mostly about, you know, girls surfing and the beach and parties, but, and it is all that, but, uh, but San Diego was actually on the map for used booksellers and, and buyers. It was an outstanding used book town in the day. 
um, shops like my grandfather's, which was the biggest in San Diego for many years. Um, shops when was, like Joe. When I was a kid, there was a place downtown called, this is like in the 70s, called Herwig or something like that. Does that Joe sound? Herwig's. Joe Herwig's. Joe was one of our best booksellers. Uh, Joe started out as an employee of my grandfather uh, at Warm Rocks. And, yeah, and eventually took off and founded his own shop. It was just around the corner from Warm Rocks. Uh, it was a, a three-story store as well. And these were back in the days when you could afford those kinds of rents in a downtown district. And when downtown districts were still real shopping uh, meccas for people in big cities. And uh, he was an outstanding bookseller. Uh, I remember that you know, we, 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 we would you know, call him and say, do you have, and we just like give like, like the first couple of words of the title. And he'd say, yes. <laughs> oh, and he knew where it was. He knew exactly oh, yeah. what it was and where it was. And, and Yeah. Oh, Joe must have had a kind of photographic memory because, and did something that uh, a lot of books, uh, booksellers don't do anymore. That is spend time in the stacks putting books away, arranging things, uh, neatening, you know, doing a little cleaning. Today we spend uh, all of our time in front of this idiot device, you know, cataloging books um, and, and hoping that we'll sell, you know, enough to, to stay alive. Back in the day, booksellers could would wander around their store and talk to customers and, you know, do a little dusting and a little straightening and, you know, take a cartload of books with them down aisle three and shelve books all day. They knew what they had. Today, my God, I, I'm hard pressed to know what I have anymore because I'm never in the stacks. I'm, I spend all, time, all my time either cataloging books, finding books, or wrapping books to mail. One of my favorite jobs when I was in college as, as a work study student was was being a um, a shelver and checker in the libraries. I'd be you know the yeah. books appointed, also going down the um, you know to see that all the books were in the right places and moving them to where they ought to be if they uh, if they weren't in their per, in their correct uh, yes uh, either Library of Congress or Dewey Decimal order because that's the, right that library was in the course of transitioning from Dewey Decimal to Library of Congress. So some sections were under one and some were under another. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I worked in the library uh, at my high school too. And I think it was the only thing I ever did that I liked. I had a, a very undistinguished career in high school, but I loved to read and I liked being in the library. And, uh, and so, yeah, I had the same taste uh, that you did. And it, it's been with me a lifetime. Yeah. Well, and also in the course of doing that, I also, that was also another way I discovered books that I was interested in that I might not have discovered is sure. doing things like, like this and um once I was when I'd leave for my 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 for my shift I'd I'd often often be checking out some of the books yes. that I'd been shelving. Yes. Okay, well anyway, thanks a lot. Uh this has been Thank you. fun. I um uh I hope that uh you know that the pandemic restrictions end up end soon and you'll have more people back in your store and although as i said this you know it's not like my channel has a huge viewership um particularly huge viewership in san, in san diego so i hope that it, it helps a little bit um uh bring your store to the attention of someone or other um yeah thank you most appreciated okay it's been a lot of fun thank thanks you. roger bye bye bye, -bye.